I'm gonna tear you apart from the inside. Oh boy. So there really was no post-credit no scene. No post-credit scene. They were they were not lying. Nope, that was it. It was just credits. Fade to black, and that's it. So that's that Spider-Man thing you saw online. That was not. That Apparently, was not real. that was not real. That was fake. I'm so, when I said this is the this is totally 100% real. You're not going to believe your eyes. I, I was. Turns out you were wrong. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. That was that was. I regret that. Real. I've made some mistakes. Look, I'm only human. Do you think it's going to be, uh, people are going to like it more than the first one? Or do you think people are going to be a little bit disappointed? I'm curious to see. I, I, that was, uh, when I first saw the movie, that was my re immediate reaction was that I loved it. Uh, but I grew up reading uh, all these characters in comic books and I was, you know, a real comic nerd, as you would say. And right. this movie is very nerdy. I get the sense that casual Marvel fans may go in there and may not like it as much as the first one. They when you say casual, you mean casual fans of the movie. Casual movie, right, Marvel movie fans yeah. that, that are not very familiar with the past characters or don't really know who Vision is and where he fits into all this yeah. or aren't that familiar with Ultron. But it is very true to those things. Uh, and, it, and it feels very much comic booky if that is an adjective. If it's not, not I, but it can I be. I just made it up. Yeah. I, you can add Y to anything and it's gonna be an adjective. But I, I, I do think that there are gonna be people who see this and they walk out and they're like, what was that that I just watched? <laughs> but I think that it is a better movie than Avengers 1. Even mm. though Avengers 1 felt like it maybe had some clearer moments that an audience can connect to, mm -hmm. and even a casual fan can connect to, this one just goes so over the top with some of the Vision stuff, who is a giant red, green, Android with a gem in his head and a, yeah, and a yellow cape. Right. He talks like a robot. Right. That was my big. It was my reaction was this is you know after Star Wars this is like the biggest movie of the year right. There's nothing bigger than this, and it is so nerdy. It is the nerdiest thing I've ever seen. At a time when so many movies are sort of embarrassed of their own inherent nerdiness and yeah. try to shy away from it, like the Fantastic Four reboot is a good example. They're trying to hide a lot of these right. things. Right. No costumes. So, right. Just right, no code names. No four logo. Just embrace it. And that's right. what this movie does. It really just gives a big hug to all the nerdier aspects of comic book movies. Yeah, I mean, you called it comic booky. Yeah. I mean, that, I definitely got that sense. I'm, I'm sitting there going, this isn't even a comic book movie. This is a movie comic book. Yeah. It is the experience of reading a comic book but on the big screen because it has all those plot threads. It has all the characters. Everyone's wearing bright, colorful costumes. Right. Nobody's wearing black leather and <laughs> sunglasses. And you have action, adventure, science fiction. You have a scene where Thor goes into a reflecting pool to divine the future. Right. You have melodrama, soap opera. There's romance. There's like, it's, it's, it is really pure, distilled comic book nerdery. And I think that is going to turn off some people. Right. They're going to go in and they're going to go, yeah, the, the fight between Iron Man and Hulk was fun. Right. Like They give you everything they're going to want. And I know people can't tell looking at us, but we kind of were dorks growing up. And we were nerds. Right? We hide it incredibly well. Right. But it was like those fantasies you had when you were 12 years old of what this would be like if it came to life. That's what you're watching. But for someone who's not like Distance us, that, right. who had a social life in high school, uh, it might be a little much. It might be. I think in time, people will revisit this, though, if they didn't like it the first time. Maybe the first viewing, is, like you said, is a little bit much. People may be a little bit put off by some of it, but I think they'll eventually come to embrace it. Right. It's main. It's like mainlining nerd heroin. Well, right. Uh, other comic book yes. movies, that's like the methadone. That's like, it'll right. get no. you there, but <laughs> it's not going to give you that euphoric high. Right. This, this one is, is like the... Uh, I need to go to rehab for six Black months after tar. I've seen this. Yeah, yeah this is the Black stuff. Tar this is the strong stuff. Right. This is this is this is the rock gut. Yeah, this is the real deal. I, can I can I say something controversial? You Please. may not like this. Oh no, hold on. Yeah, take a drink because this is your this isn't going to go well. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to hate Thanos, and he hasn't done anything yet. Thanos is not even really a character yet, 
and I already hate him. And I say that having said how much fun I had with this movie. Right. And I loved, at the end of the first Avengers, when Thanos appears out of nowhere, and it was like, Oh Ugh! my God, right. Oh my God, he's there. <laughs> you know, right. like it was like the geekiest thing ever. And I do love that side of these movies. But now we're, we're entering, what, three years of this character being teased. We've got yeah. at least, when does the next Avengers come out? 2018? Right. So that's like six solid years of teasing before this character potentially has done anything. And it's just, tr like, if he was the main villain of this movie, if this movie was about him, I probably would have been fine with it. But the fact that he's, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but the fact that what we get of him in this movie is obviously setting up the Infinity War in a later movie, it's just like, I, I need, I, I don't really understand why he, like, if, the end of Avengers 1, the little teaser had been in this movie, that might have worked for me. If I knew, okay, he's coming next. I feel like the insertion of Ultron into this thing, who works as a villain, a little out of nowhere. I feel like, wait, 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 gotta get to this Thanos guy. He's gotta do something. Right now, he's, he's, he's taking so long, he's diminishing uh, his skills as a villain to me. It's like, if you were really all that bad of a dude, you would have done something good already. You're really not doing much of anything. And, and the buildup is gonna be so huge that he's gonna have a lot to live up to when he finally appears after six years. I disagree. Ah. Uh, I disagree. Didn't see I that one coming. I don't know what you wanted. I mean, it's not like he has a, you know, a 20 minute monologue in this movie. There's not a lot of, uh, of lip service paid to Thanos. I mean, he's alluded to in a certain character storyline. Yeah. But I mean, it's not like people walk around going, that's Thanos, we're, oh boy, he's really gonna get us. I mean, you, there, there are some, you know, mentions of a higher power, there's something else out there that is, that is bigger than all of us. And that's, and that's my point, is that we're, they still don't even really know, the Avengers, after all this time, still have like no idea. I, I, I like the teasing, but at a certain point, I'm like, poop or get off the Infinity Throne. So you would, in this movie, you would have wanted like zero mentions of stones or Less. Thanos. Less? Yes. Le I mean, not zero, but less. Let's talk okay. about the, the new characters. Yeah. You have a favorite of the bunch? I liked Scarlet Witch. Mm -hmm. I thought she was pretty good. I think Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver have sort of a thankless role in this to kind of come in and you're not really sure where their allegiances lie and they sort of have to be the new guys and you're like, well, I like the old guys. Give me more of those old guys. But I thought Elizabeth Olsen brought something to it. I mean, it's a very, you know, when we're talking about nerdy stuff, you know, she's doing all this sort of weird hippie witch, you know, pulling up conjuring things, um, but she sells it, and it, and it, and it works. What and does she do again? What was the thing she do does? Want, okay, I just all these, I these weird sure things, and got, red yeah. things flying out of her head. You know, it doesn't really, it's like magic, and it's something like we've never really seen before in mm -hmm. these movies, you know. Uh, Could have been a little clearer what exactly she's, she's, she can do and can't do, don't you think? Not to be too nerdy about right, it, well, but I what think, exactly can she and can and cannot do? Listen, I, nobody wants a Scarlet Witch origin story. And nobody wants to sit down and go, well, what are your powers, lady? Yeah, and she okay. describes them. That's and fair. She's a All witch right. who has, you know, red, you know, sort of pulsing things coming out of her. <laughs> she can control objects. She can get into your mind. I let's just accept that that's who she is. Okay, fine. Nobody's sitting down uh, visioning right. going like, oh, c can he shoot things out of his, the gem in his head? Like, I mean, I'm, he thinking, right. I'm thinking that, but okay. Uh, but I thought she was good, and she sets it. You know, Quicksilver is, doesn't have a whole lot to do throughout the course of the movie, except... Uh, They're in this weird situation yeah. where Quicksilver, Quicksilver and it, uh, played by a different actor, has already appeared in X-Men. Right. Right? And I think he, he got a little bit more stuff to do in that one. He had a real showcase sequence. Right. And I don't think anything in this movie really like tops anything he did in that one. And I think generally people are gonna be kind of confused. Like, wasn't this the same guy? He was in X-Men. Why, why is, is he uh, in this with a different actor? And if he's in it, why aren't any of the X-Men in this? Like, I think he's really, his right. presence is going to raise a lot of questions and probably cause more harm than good. And why doesn't his stuff look as cool as what in He in looked X -Men. cooler in uh, X-Men, really The did. best part that you've, of, of Quicksilver you've seen in the trailers when he slow-mo punches Cap in the face. Right, and that's sort of a weak sauce version of the thing he did in, in, right. in Days of Future Past. Right, what about you? New characters? I, I really like the vision. Yeah. I mean, just because, as we've said, they really went for it, you know? They didn't make a guy, they didn't put a guy no. in a black leather suit or, uh, you know, he looks within reason, just like the comic book Vision, which is an outrageous character with a big cape and the, and the gem on the forehead and the red face and the green, and uh, just his whole origin with some important notable changes, they really go for it. They really embrace the kind of 
the android with a soul and, yeah. and uh, pontificating about humanity and all that sort of stuff. And I think that it, he's a character who doesn't get a lot of time in this movie, as you might think, but could potentially be a really interesting one in future movies as well. Absolutely. What about villains? How do you think, uh, we've talked a little bit about your feelings on Thanos. What do you think, uh, Ult how, does do Ultron, Thanos. how does Ultron match up with Loki in terms of Avengers villains? I liked Ultron. I feel like he's even more of a, a Joss Whedon villain than Loki was, in the sense that he's like all powerful, has this grandmaster plan, does a lot of talking, seems almost, he comes, he walks right up to the line of knowing he's in a movie, in terms yeah. of he makes jokes about being a villain, and, and he comes right up to the line of breaking the fourth wall without doing it. Right. And uh, he really feels like one of, like a villain out of Buffy or something to me. Like he has that real Joss Whedon y uh, stuff. I think he's another character that might turn some people off because he's not very robot-like. He does not talk like a robot. Right. And he, even his mouth has sort of, it's like rubbery in a way that kind of suggests he's human, you he know what I mean? Teeth. He has teeth. And, right. and his, he has like almost like lips. Like it's not like yeah. a bah, 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 bah. When he talks, like his mouth moves like a, almost like a human. And I think that's gonna confuse and maybe turn some people off. But I sort of really enjoyed James Spader's yeah. The sort of joie de vivre that he brought, that kind of really swaggering villainess that he brought. And uh, even though I thought he was kind of mysterious and not really sure what he was doing throughout the movie, they do reveal sort of his eventual plan. And then when they, when they got there, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Because I think he's very sort of like his motives and what he's doing is kind of vague throughout the movie. But I felt like they paid it off by the end. Yeah, I, I liked Ultron. I, I had some of the, some minor beefs with him. And I, and I think that, He's not quite as good as Loki. I mean, Tom Hiddleston was so great in that role and brought so much to it. Mm -hmm. Just as a human, there's something that you can do True. between two humans in a room that you can't do between a nine-foot robot or James Spader in a mocap suit uh, and a character. But I, yeah, again, I could see Ultron being somebody that turns some people off. I mean, he's almost like a, you know, petulant eight-year-old. You know, I mean, he right. is physically imposing. He's got all this intelligence, but he's still brand new. He's still figuring a lot of things out and he throws temper tantrums and he gets really upset about really silly things and... And we, we you know, the last time we were here we talked about Ex Machina, which is right. a much more interesting and smart movie about AI and artificial intelligence and robots and, and this one, you know, it is, it is what it is. So I think, you know, if you're looking for that, you're not gonna no. really get it. No. And, and Spader was great. I think without Spader, yeah, the Yeah, he really is, is not, the reason it works. Right. Yeah. The big question for me, moving forward is what are they going to do without Joss Whedon? Because I feel like the main reason this movie works is him and his love of comic books, his understanding of the characters, his ability to juggle all these things, to have great dialogue throughout. And to get to the next movie, Avengers 3 and 4, or part 1 and part 2 of Avengers 3 without him, I'm a little frightened. I mean, they, they, they've hired the guys who did Captain America Winter Soldier, the Russo brothers, and they're great, but this is gonna be a huge undertaking for any director. And I'm, I'm kinda worried what's gonna happen without him in Avengers 3. I will bet that he'll still be around in some sort of advisory role mm -hmm. to Marvel, uh, some You're sort of godfather. Right. I can't imagine, he can't direct it, he can't write it, I think he wants to do something else, but I would be shocked if he didn't sit in on some development meetings, throwing out cool ideas. They text Joss on set and go like, we need something for Tony to say right here. And he texts them back and goes, I've got something and it's perfect and they put it in the movie. So I don't think fans should be too worried about that. All right, so if we were rating this movie on a scale of one to 10, one being the Elektra movie, yeah. and 10 being, I guess, the first Avengers. Right. On a scale of one to 10, I'd give it an eight, but I don't think that that necessarily makes this a better movie than the first Avengers. I would agree. I would give it an eight out of ten yeah. too. And I mean, if you put both of them down in front of me, like, would I watch the first one again over this this one? I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't. I, I would probably want to watch both of them. But I mean, yeah. At a, at a, at a, at a, at a scale of ten, one to ten, I would give it. I would give it an eight. Well, this has been fun, but in the style of the Avengers and Marvel, we need some kind of cliffhanger. Like a, a post credits to the post credits. Yes, something's got to happen that's going to bring people back for the next episode. So you're going to have to think of something real quick. Maybe the bartender's going to wonder why we didn't tip him and come back and shake his fist at us like Thanos. The money, the tip, uh, the Infinity Stones. <laughs> Give me those stones. And he's yeah, with the gauntlet. He's holding the gauntlet. Right. And then in six episodes, we still don't ever see him, and he yeah. still doesn't have a tip. When is he going to come back? What's going to happen with that tip? Probably never. Thank <laughs> you.